the, the title of the Ariadna study <laughs> is Analytical Perturbative Theories of Motion in Highly Inhomogeneous Gravitational Field. And um, I've done it together with Francesco and James. Uh, at the beginning, uh, take a look at the model, um, then see how to derive uh, the gravitational potential on which we are uh, basing the, the whole model. Uh, take a quick look at the overall procedure, which will lead us to find some frozen orbits. Uh, the whole procedure is done by lead transformation, so we will just take a very quick look at it. And then uh, speak about the computational complexity of the whole procedure and see the results and the conclusions. Uh, the model that we have is a restricted two-body problem, so with a massless spacecraft and an inhomogeneous body. Um, that thus produces an inhomogeneous gravitational field. We suppose that the um, asteroid is uniformly rotating around the z axis with a constant uh, angular velocity. The Hamiltonian in uh, Whittaker or Nogat polar variables is, looks like this, and uh, where r is the distance from the asteroid. Uh, theta and nu are the argument of latitude and the um, uh, argument of node, and the, the capital ones are just the conjugate of the, of the three variables. Uh, the potential that we have here is found in a painful way, uh, and after a lot of passages uh, will look like something like this in which, of course, we will have all the dependencies of, um, of, our, um, of our variables. In particular, we have the argument of node, and uh, where these coefficients here um, are known as Stokes coefficients or, harmonic or spherical harmonic coefficients, and um, are usually found for uh, each specific uh, asteroid more or less in this way or in other ways. Uh, the overall procedure that we do, so we take, w that we have done in this whole um, study, we take the uh, Hamiltonian that we have seen before, which is depending on six variables, and through the relegation of the argument of node, so a procedure that uh, will uh, take the perturbation of the argument of node always smaller, uh, we get to the mm, we get a change of coordinates that brings us to the relegated nodal polar variables, in which uh, we have an, a new Hamiltonian with, uh, without the presence of the argument of node. So in which uh, the the argument of node is cyclic, and then we can get the um, capital N as constant. Then what we do is to change to the Delaunay coordinates. And again, we will have one coordinate missing that is the one corresponding to the argument of node. And through another process that is called the normalization, which is essentially equivalent to uh, averaging uh, on, the true, on the mean anomaly, on the true anomaly, uh, we get to the normalized <coughs> DNA variables, which will give us uh, an Hamiltonian without the um, the mean anomaly and the argument of node, such that um, we have four variables, but two will be constant, so just an Hamiltonian in two variables. Okay, so um, we will have two um, equation or two motions, depending only on uh, small g and uh, uh, so the argument of peri g uh, of pericenter and um, capital G, and this is explicitly integrable only up to uh, considering only two coefficients. This is important because this is the main difference between our work and the work by Shears, uh, which uh, only considering two um, coefficients has an Hamiltonian which, by his own words, is uh, trivially integrable, while our is actually not. What we are going to do with this um, system that we found, we are going to get some frozen orbits that, by definition, uh, are those orbits which have eccentricity, inclination, and argument of pericenter uh, constant. And 
So we will set the eccentricity to be zero, which by definition will bring us to, to set the, the second of the motions equal to zero. The uh, argument of per center equal to zero, so the first equation equal to zero. And then we will have the inclination automatically equal to zero. And it's essentially what we're going to do. Uh, so solving these two equations will bring us to four um, uh, initial conditions of our orbits. The whole procedure is done by the Lie transformation. So the whole procedure that we have seen before, both the relegation and the normalization, will be done by the Lie transformations, which given a Hamiltonian developed by a small uh, parameter, will enable us to find a canonic change of variables which will map the initial Hamiltonian into a new Hamiltonian plus a reminder. So both the uh, normalization and the relegation will bring the, um, the variable that we have uh, said before uh, into the reminder and the, the actual Hamiltonian that we will have will not contain anymore those two variables. In particular, um, the process of the Lie transformation will find uh, will allow us to find a new Hamiltonian equivalent to the first one, such that it satisfies some property. The difference between relegation and normalization is, for example, that uh, relegation in the relegation, what we the property that we impose is that the argument of node will only appear in the reminder, while in the normalization, what we want is that the new Hamiltonian is in normal form, <coughs> whose definition is um, that the Poisson bracket with the integrable part of the starting Hamiltonian is always zero. This is done by solving, um, so all the transformation and the new uh, Hamiltonian uh, are found step by step. So we have to decide at, what, uh, at which step we want to truncate the process. Every step is uh, solved, is found uh, by a homological equation and in which this term here can be evaluated from the previous steps and we find um, the new term of the new Hamiltonian and the, the term of the uh, corresponding uh, canonic change of variables. About uh, the um, computational complexity of these two processes at least with Mathematica. Um, for the relegation, we can consider um, how many um, uh, homologic as many uh, homologic equations as we want. So in particular, um, we can see that this is the maximum order of the coefficients, but is not the actual number of the coefficients. The actual number of the coefficients is this number plus two multiplied by these numbers plus one, so for example, at 10, we have uh, 132 coefficients. And uh, for 20, uh, we have 462 coefficients, which takes more or less 20 hours to process. So what we have done is actually to um, evaluate the whole results, uh, considering 10, uh, the, the, the maximum order up to 10 which is um, 132 coefficients. Uh, that is in hours what happens. So considering just one uh, homologic equation is uh, not that bad, but then going after is going to be crazy with Mathematica on this laptop. Of course, the whole uh, thing can be fastened with another computer, a better one, but the, the way uh, the behavior is going to be exactly the same. About the normalization, what we have to do, uh, well, what we have to say at the beginning is that it's not possible to uh, pass in an, uh, in an automated way to the second uh, homologic equation. So the only way is to evaluate the first homologic equation. And this is uh, a problem that we found, but is a well-known problem. And um, so this is the only way, uh, it is much faster as procedure, and this is the computational complexity curve. Uh, again, for 20 coefficients, it's going to take 15 minutes, so if we want to process that, it's 
20 hours plus 15 minutes at least. What we have found is, uh, okay, uh, what we have produced is a um, program that if we set the eccentricity and the inclination will try to find, if possible, if there, there exist, some orbits. And we have done the procedure for all the, for five asteroids, but we have to think that for Eros we had only uh, four coefficients, uh, well, four, uh, five per six coefficients, so up to the order four. Well, for the other, we had all the other coefficients. And what we have done is to find some kind of orbits. For example, uh, in here, we set the eccentricity to be uh, very high and uh, the inclination to be low. And the orbit is always of the same type, the orbit produced. So something like this. For all the asteroids, it's going to be something like this, as the eccentricity and the inclination are fixed. But, uh, of course, the, um, the <coughs> semi-major axis of the orbit is going to vary. And these are the actual semi-major axis in meters. And the period is going to vary. Uh, again, we have done, so this is the, the type of orbit. Uh, we have done for another orbit with uh, uh, the other way around. So a very small eccentricity and a medium inclination. And... Uh, what we have is this orbit here, and it's for all the um, for all the asteroids. It's more or less the same, except for how big it is and um, and the, the period. And of course, uh, it seems not to be a frozen orbit, but it is more or less. They are of course perturbed orbs. Um, they are more or less uh, perturbed frozen orbits because we have found them in the relegated, uh, in the normalized Delaunay variables, which instead what we were searching for is the real variables. So we get a frozen orbit in the normalized <coughs> Delaunay variables and then we get back to the real system. So this is what it actually does in the real world. So they are perturbed frozen orbits. And the last one is, again, with a small eccentricity and with a uh, small inclination as well. So again, we have all the comparison of the data. And the result is an orbit more or less like this, in which uh, this is actually four, um, four months, something like that, uh, in which it actually, it actually remains inclined in the same way just goes yeah. around because the argument of no the argument of node can vary and so again the orbit is more or less this finally we get some conclusion so um, the gravitational potential has been derived actually in two different ways in the um, in the report because uh, it was not clear uh, which one was the right um, uh, the right way, so the, the previous literature was very confused. Um, all the previous work uh, that we found uh, only included the first homologic equation and the coefficients up to C22 and S22, uh, uh, no, not even, without the S22, while instead our procedure can generalize it to any arbitrary order. Uh, and finally, the completely automated procedure of uh, the um, of the whole um, of the whole system uh, can be made faster uh, if taken on other machines or possibly if done on other softwares, but cannot be extended farther in an automated way uh, because only a semi-automated. It was clear by the. Um, integrals that went out that only a semi-automated procedure may be possible. <laughs>